Ugh. Gotta catch my breath. On um, one of the most unforgettable nights in Knicks history, um, a young man, because he's still young, that will undoubtedly go down as one of the greatest players in Knicks history, gave us one of the best performances in Knicks history. And the fact that it comes in a loss is just about the most unfortunate thing that I could possibly fathom. Um, I frankly don't have the words right now. I'm, I'm exhausted because I'm sure like a lot of people watching this uh, from about the middle of the fourth quarter beginning, like about the seven, eight minute mark, whatever it was, um, I stood up and I was pacing and I did not sit down until just about um, two minutes ago. And I couldn't because, and I, I said something similar after the Pacers game earlier this year um, when Jalen Brunson gave a performance that brought him, himself to tears and, and many of us to tears, including me. Um, I, I, I could not remember another game where I wanted it more, not for myself or, for, you know, you know, any of us, but for, for him. And this game tonight was like that feeling like exponentially. So, um, you cannot do more on a basketball court. You cannot give more of yourself in an athletic feat. Um, you can't. You can't care more. You can't try more. You, I mean, what Jalen Brunson did tonight is the stuff of legends. And it, like, if you if you watch the game on MSG, like I was I was trying to write them all down. Like Mike Breen kept trying to find new ways to describe what he was seeing. Like in the third quarter, <laughs> he, he he pulled out the Brunson burners lit right now. And then in the fourth quarter, Jalen Brunson, the gift that keeps on giving. And then I think it was um, after it was, it was actually, it was after the, the jump ball violation. What a ridiculous call um, said that Jalen Brunson's the type of player that made us fall in love with basketball. And he said that to his broadcasting partner, Clyde Frazier, who, of course, uh, turned 79 years old today. Happy birthday, Clyde. Sorry they couldn't get you a win. Clyde Frazier, you know, your mileage may vary on who the greatest Nick in history is. Um, I think there's good arguments for him. I think there's arguments for Patrick. And I know a lot of the old heads who witnessed the championship years will, will, will go down saying it's, it's Willis. Um, but Clyde's up there. He's very high up there. And I thought it was so appropriate for Jalen Brunson to do what he did tonight in front of what has been the greatest point guard in Knicks history and on his birthday. And to like, that's Clyde level stuff that we saw tonight. That's, you know, he did it in San Antonio, a place that has been known for championships as much as any franchise over the last 25 years. That's championship level stuff. I, I, and again, it's like, what is it? It's, it's March 29th. It's game 73. Like this team has done everything that's asked of it. And, and more when I think a lot of teams, given the injuries that they faced over the last several months, would have gone away and just they would have like petered out, you know, but there is a certain there is something special about this team. And I understand that I'm saying this on a night when the whole re the reason they lost is because they ran out of gas. And the reason they ran out of gas is because they had to expend so much energy to come back because they did not come out of the gate with the proper, um, you know, proper of like oomph, what is necessary to face off against a Spurs team that seems to want to skip the usual steps that come with drafting a player of this, of this ilk. And like, 
hats off to Wimbanyama. I think he's, uh, I saw somebody tweet out before. He's the first rookie since Shaq to uh, get 40 and 20. I mean, that guy's going to run the league for years. And I think tonight was uh, probably the def- will, will probably go down as the defining performance of his rookie season, which is also the other unfortunate part about tonight. Not only that the Knicks lost, they Jalen Brunson put up 61 points in a game that will not be remembered for Jalen Brunson's 61 points. It'll be remembered for Wemby because not only did he get 40 and 20, but he made every big play. I mean, defensively, you know, I don't know how many blocks he ended up with. It doesn't matter because he just changed the complete and total complexion of anything the Knicks hoped to do around the basket when he was in the game. Um, uh, the best one-on-one battle. I know one guy's, you know, six foot nothing and the other guy is like eight feet tall. That's as good a one-on-one battle as I've ever seen as a Knicks fan um, because neither guy backed down and both guys made big shot after big shot. And unfortunately for the Knicks, you know, not a told, not a, not a whole lot of big shots were made tonight by anyone outside of Jalen Brunson. I know like he took 47 shots. The next most uh, shots were taken by, were taken by DiVincenzo and Josh Hart. But like, I frankly didn't think anybody else really had it, you know? Um, And, uh, and Jalen Brunson did what Jalen Brunson needed to do to get them back in that game. And he almost pulled it out on his shoulders. He almost pulled it out um, by himself. And I just, I, it is, you know, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking that it's going to come in a loss. It seems trite to refer to the larger picture after a game like that because a game like that deserves to be um, evaluated and appreciated on its merits. A performance like that, certainly it deserves to be evaluated and appreciate, appreciated on its merits outside of anything else. But, like, the Knicks are involved in a playoff race. They lose a game that they, quote-unquote, should have won. I've been I've been circling these four games for I, I, months in my head, quite literally, because the most I feel like the most dangerous thing in sports is the game you're supposed to win. And the Knicks are, I believe, went into tonight as the only team in the entire NBA that if you look at the teams with the eight worst records in the league, they were the only team going into tonight. I'm pretty sure that had beaten every one of those teams uh, that they had played thus far. And they only had two left tonight and the penultimate game of the season against Brooklyn. And it's a lot. It's like it's hard. It's unreasonable to ask a team to win over the course of 82 games every single game that they're supposed to win because it it requires so much. It requires them to come out with the requisite effort in every one of those games. And it requires the other team that they're playing to come out and be their usual bad selves. And the Spurs did not come out tonight and be their usual bad selves. I know they have whatever they have, 15, 16 wins or whatever it is. Um, but that team came out like a team that meant business. And you and like they were good. Like they hit their shots in the first half. Like, you know, you go up by 21 and that's a, that's a big freaking hill to climb when you combine it with the fact that the Knicks were like came out at like, I don't know, 80, 85 percent speed. It was too much to overcome, um, you know, and and it, it got them in the hole that it got them in and they ran out of gas ultimately. But. It should not diminish one iota what we saw. And if we are if we are going to zoom out and look at the bigger picture. I've said I've said versions of what I'm about to say a half dozen times over the course of this year. Um, and I feel like I there's still doubt around the league. Yeah, and you know how I know that, and I'm going to reference this stupid, ridiculous thing, and I'm hate, I hate that I'm going to reference this because it gives credence to something that does not deserve to have credence. And I'm usually pretty good about ignoring this shit, but it is so telling that in a season where by any conceivable metric, eye test, like team performance, advanced metrics, counting stats, anything you want to look at. Jalen Brunson has been at worst, at worst, one of the six most important contributors to winning in the entire league. And, and by saying top top six, I'm, I'm, I might be sliding him, but you want to go top five, whatever. He's in the he's in the top tier. There's no, he's not in the second tier. He's in the top tier. And like, and what I keep saying, and I'll say it again, 
there there cannot be any doubt anymore about what tier he's in league wide. He's one of the five best offensive players in basketball. And I understand you look at it and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't compute to say that a guy that is his size, you know, that that doesn't really like he's, he's God knows he's come a long way. He had a bunch tonight, but like doesn't have Steph Curry's range is can be one of the five most dangerous offensive players in basketball. When you compare him to someone like Kevin Durant, who is like God made a perfect offensive basketball player. And yet if you compare them on their merits this season, and I'm like, I'm not calling out Kevin Durant specifically, just put any of the typical guys that you, that come up with these sorts of conversations. When you compare him against all of these guys on their merits this season, he's going to come out on top against a hell of a lot of them. You know, uh, you know, like, yeah, Jokic is number one. Doncic is, is right there. I mean, Shea Gilders Alexander has had a phenomenal year. Phenomenal year. And yet, I, I like, he, Brunson's right there with SGA. I'm sorry, he is. He is. When you look at the team that that dude has had, because they've made they've been remarkably healthy throughout the year, versus the team that Brunson has. And again, this is not to diminish, you know, the Josh Hart's and Dante Divincenzo's and, and and of the world, but what he has done in putting this team on his shoulders and and leading them to the record that he has led them to over the last two plus months is insanity. The Knicks have not had a player like like they you could count the amount of players like this they've had in their history on one hand. And you can count the amount of players in the league of this caliber on one hand right now. Um, I hope if there's anybody else out there that needed reaffirmation of what we are witnessing, of what this player means to this franchise, uh, and obviously most importantly, what this ca- what this player is capable of doing um, in terms of being the number one scorer on a team that has championship aspirations, like there can't be any doubt anymore. And I, I didn't even me- mention the thing that I was going to reference this stupid MVP ladder that the MV that the NBA.com puts out um, every week. Like that doesn't, st- I think it came out today or yesterday, or whatever it is, still doesn't have Jalen Brunson in the top 10. It's, it's, fu- it's like comical. It's actually, it's comical. It's funny. Um, you know, but keeps adding fuel to the fire. Um, and, 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 and the dude put up 61 tonight and he's not going to care. Like he's not going to care. He's going to stand by his locker. If he hasn't already, when the microphones go in front of him and he is going to be dejected and that's genuine. That's not an act. That's real. And you know what? So is everybody in that locker room. They're not going to be happy for him because they know that he doesn't care. Because all they care about is winning. Like you saw the reactions from the bench on that turnover at the end of the game when Precious got the rebound and tried to throw it too fast to DiVincenzo and DiVincenzo couldn't handle it. I, it's a lot of frustrating plays in that overtime. I mean, I think I, half a dozen plays in that overtime between that, between the jump ball violation. How many times did the Knicks, how many times did the Knicks miss shots like, like, like appropriate with Easter on Sunday? How many bunnies the Knicks missed tonight? I lost count. Um, so like all of that was 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 frustrating. Um and that's that's like the, that's the most that's the worst part of it is like that we have to associate the word frustrating with this freaking game. Um there's other stuff that deserves to be talked about other than Brunson. Um Probably, no, not probably. Definitely the most frustrating bench performance, certainly of the year, if not in years, plural. Um, what, like, like I, I'll tell you who I wouldn't want to be tonight. I wouldn't want to be, uh, I, I don't, you know, it's unfair to call any one player out because I think that was a collective effort by the bench there in the beginning of the fourth quarter. I mean, when when you look, I mean, just look at the plus minus. Um, and this is well, this is a little unfair because it falls all on Precious, minus thirty in sixteen minutes, minus thirty in sixteen minutes. Bogdanovich minus sixteen in fifteen minutes. 
And I'm, I, I, you know, he, he gamed it out. He battled towards the end there on limping around, did come up with a big tip in, and I'm not calling him out for effort. God knows I'm not calling him out for effort. He he's out there as a second game back, but I did. I have to say there was a big drop off in this game. Anytime Mitch was on the court and Isaiah Hardenstein wasn't, and it was noticeable and Hardenstein fouled out the fact that they got into the penalty. And again, this is the bench's fault. The fact that they put the Knicks in the penalty so early in the quarter that got um, the Spurs on the line helped uh, contributed to um, the uh, Spurs shooting a total of 32 free throws tonight to the Knicks 12. You want to talk to me about the refs? All right. I Sure. Whatever. Um, but that bench performance was, I mean, it was abhorrent. And it's just, it's a real freaking shame um, that uh, unfortunately for all the things that have gone right and for all the things that this uh, front office has done, I mean, brilliantly, including getting Jalen Brunson, getting uh, Isaiah Hardenstein and getting all these guys who have put together the season, the one, the one miss that, and, and it, it's really, it's not one miss. They've had two misses. They've had two like significant misses, non-draft related, you know, in their, in their time running the, the team. And one directly led to the other because the first miss was Fournier and then they felt pretty strongly that they needed to turn the Fournier salary into something that could be useful to them, especially knowing that they would probably need to pick up the, the option for next year for salary cap purposes and the whole thing. And so what did they turn it into? They turned it into Bogdanovich. Was he, was Bogdanovich or Burks a perfect fit for this team? I thought they'd be a much better fit than they were. And he's not watching tonight. Um, he'll maybe see it tomorrow or hear it tomorrow. But man, was I wrong on Bogdanovich? You know? Um, oh boy, that dude is just, it ain't great right now. And that's, that's a big miss because like, and, and again, I don't want to put it all on him. It was not all on him. Um, but you know, you, you needed more tonight. You needed, you needed someone else to step up in the minutes that Brunson was off the court. I mean, they look, they, the numbers, the numbers are what the numbers are. Jalen Brunson plus 20 in a game. They lost by four. Now, Josh Hart also plus 20. I don't want to diminish his contributions, but, you know, slight difference when one guy goes uh, four for 13 and finishes with 12 points and the other guy goes for, for 61 and their, and their minutes obviously lined up a lot. But I thought, jo I thought Hart played well. You don't have to shoot well to play well. Josh Hart played very well. Um, oh, man. That's just a fucking heartbreaker. An absolute heartbreaker. But it's not often you get to see that level of greatness. It's not often you get to see that level of greatness. And what we witnessed was as great a game as you will ever see. I will say now, and this is the last thing I'll say before we move on to the health uh, check and the standings update. That is the greatest performance by a Nick that I have ever seen. In my opinion, been watching this team for 30 years. Never seen Never seen anything like that. And I don't know if I ever will see anything like that again. On that note, we move on with the rest of the show. Um, starting with the Unified Healing Road to Recovery. So you can go to unifiedhealing.com to learn more and find a center near you. Uh, we also have some lovely scrolling uh, stuff on the bottom of the screen. Uh, disclaimer, I think, uh, as it were. So, yes, uh, Unified Healing Road to Recovery. Um, you know who the Knicks could use tonight? Is OG Ananobi. Still no OG. Unfortunate. Um, you know, this is one of those games where, you know, there have been some games where you have not noticed, not you, you always notice his absence, where you have not needed him. This was this was a game they needed. Him. And, uh, you know, I... I, I Boy, I wonder where the Knicks would be if they've had um, him over the last, I mean, for, for more than three games since January 27th. Um, but he remains out, as does Julius Randle. Um, I, I would, I know Jeremy said for him it would move from, I think, DEFCON 4 to DEFCON 3 or from DEFCON 3 to DEFCON 2 if OG Ananobi, um did not play Sunday on Easter uh, evening against Oklahoma City. I don't think we're going to see him. I have a bad, I have a funny feeling we're not going to see him. And I, I, I don't, 
I don't know when we're going to see OG, and that that's a little worrisome to me. Um, here's uh, by the way, quick. This is not um, well. This is Tom Thibodeau may need some uh, healing provided by Unified. Uh, per Steph Bondi, he was really frustrated with the officiating, especially the non calls on Brunson. A foul is a foul. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, say so, I mean, the free throw disparity is what the free throw disparity is. So there's that. Um, and then Julius Randle, you know, we'll we'll see. He, we'll see when he comes back. I, I I don't know what else to say at this point. Like, he's still not taking contact. We need him. They need him. They need him because Jalen Brunson um, is, is <laughs> might seem like he's five guys. He's, he's one guy, and they need help. Oh, uh, GMAC in the chat reminded me, don't forget Alec Burks. How dare I forget Alec Burks? Yeah, maybe he would have been the difference tonight. He's still out with a sore shoulder. Uh, led to Shake Milton seeing rotation minutes in the first half tonight. Um, I don't think Shake Milton particularly distinguished himself. And uh, yeah, GMAC's putting in the chat. I would like them to forget him and Bogey in Texas. Yeah, maybe um, maybe Bogey and 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 Burks could uh, gorge themselves on on Whataburger and and miss the flight back to New York. Although the way Bogdanovich played tonight, I think he probably gorged himself on uh, Whataburger before uh, tip off. If I if I had to wager a guess. What an embarrassing performance that was! I, I've reached I've reached the point of it's it's kind of boiling over with me, uh, with with Bogey. It's not good, and it's 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 getting really it's getting very frustrating. Um, okay, enough about the road to recovery. Um, presented by Unified Healing. Now, our out of town scoreboard presented by T Squared Social. Uh, don't forget, T-Squared Social uh, is the place to be when you uh, want to watch any sports, when you want to have some fun with a golf simulator. Actually, their simulators do all kinds of other things. Um, bring the kids, bring the whole fam. Uh, I saw we were there for the watch party. Somebody was having their 40th birthday there. It looked like a grand old time. Um, and most importantly, you can get a free draft beer when you tell them that KFS sent you. Uh, go to www.tsquaredsocial.com. Again, that is tsquaredsocial.com to learn more. Um, what what didn't I mention? Duckpin Bowling. It's just it's the biggest sports bar in New York. It's uh, it's 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 quite frankly the best sports sports bar in New York. I'm looking forward to watching a playoff game there um, when we get to that point in time. So, the out of town scores. Let us uh, do this uh, bit of. Uh, well, I was going to say, let us do this bit of dirty business. Um, I, I, they, um, We're at the point in the year, for me at least, where I'm not sure what's a good result, and I'm not sure what's a bad result. Case in point, our first out-of-town score that I will read is um, the, if I, could, if I could find it. Yeah, here we go. 76ers Cavs. So the Cavaliers won 117 to 114, beating the Sixers. Um, which moves the Cavaliers a half game ahead of New York. New York had been a half game ahead of the Cavs. Now the Cavs go a half game ahead of the Knicks uh, in third place, puts the Knicks back down in fourth place. However, the Knicks do remain two games ahead of the Orlando Magic because the Orlando Magic lost their third straight game uh, tonight to the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, Paul George with a big shot late there to uh, extend the lead from one to uh, three. And the Magic couldn't uh, make a game tying bucket as time ran out. Um, the reason I, I say what I say about getting it's getting confusing who to root for. For anybody who missed it, uh, like Joel Embiid is like right there. He's right there, ready to come back. And uh, the Sixers again lost tonight, which puts them two and a half games back of the Indiana Pacers, um, who won tonight. So created some. They beat the Lakers. They blew out the Lakers in Indiana, so created some separation between themselves and the Sixers. Um, the Heat also, the other relevant team, they demolished. And when I say demolished, I mean demolished. They beat the the Trailblazers by sixty in Miami. The Heat are coming, um, and if you don't believe me, take one look at their schedule. So, my point is, like, I don't know where the Knicks are going to finish. Um, I think tonight probably puts the kibosh on any notions of them finishing in second place. I never quite bought that as a real possibility. 
I know everybody was really excited going into this game. They were a game and a half back, the whole thing. Between the tiebreaker and Milwaukee having a really easy schedule coming up, I, I, I don't, I was never quite there. But whatever, whether they finish in third, whether they finish in fourth, there is still definitely a possibility they could finish as low as fifth. I would be shocked if they f- fell to six. That the, the projection systems have them at something like a less than a five percent chance to, to, to fall below fifth. Um, but wherever they are, I know, I know we're all gung ho. Get our guys back. Get healthy. It doesn't matter who we face. Giddy up. Come on. I personally, just speaking for myself, I would rather not face Joel and be in the first round of the playoffs. So the fact that the Sixers lost tonight to further solidify them into play in position, um, you know, it's like, is that is, is that necessarily a bad result, even though the Knicks fell a half game but below the Cavs? Again, I, I, I know they want to be in third. I know they want to avoid boston until the conference finals i totally get that i hear it fred katz had very sound logic when he was talking about it on his uh uh podcast and shoot um good good mailbag episode um earlier this or at the end of the week i get it but i don't know i think it's going to be very interesting in terms of figuring out who to root for and who not to root for um down the stretch of the season other out of town scores um the Timberwolves are about to beat the Nuggets. Big win for them. What a job uh, by the Timberwolves since Carl Anthony Towns went out. Uh, the Warriors demolished the Hornets. Um, big win uh, for them, um, especially since the Rockets are engaged in a nail-biter with the Jazz at the moment. Uh, Jazz have a three-point lead over Houston heading into the fourth quarter. Uh, Thunder, without SGA, kicked the crap out of the Suns. Say a prayer for a Phoenix fan, that if you know any. Um, Nets beat the Bulls uh, in the tank off. Pistons beat the Wizards. And I think that is. And uh, Kings Mavs are at halftime. Uh, Kings up by nine. Okay. Those are out of turn scores presented by T Squared Social. Again, for all of your sports bar needs, uh, visit T Squared Social on 42nd Street, uh, just aside from Grand Central Station. And on that note, I think we are ready to talk. About what I imagine, I imagine it will be a lot of Jalen Brunson tonight, but we'll see. And uh, shout out to Kev, he's on the ones and twos with uh, GMAC. Kind of has the night off. He never really has the night off, but he kind of has the night off. Uh, we got two from Rafa starting us off. I'd die for Jalen Brunson and the Knicks. Uh, you and me both. I like it. And another one from Rafa. These refs are ass BS calls for Wemby, none for JB. So, again, we got uh, the great New York basketball Twitter account just put up the video of Tom Thibodeau speaking about this exact point. A foul's a foul. That's what I do know. What I'm hearing, I don't really like. I don't know what else you can do, what else you could say. It's clear as day. It's really that simple. And that's Tibbs on Jalen Brunson getting six free throws on 47 shots. 47 shots, six free throws with the amount of with the with with the way the whistle was, that's the thing is like, and not to sound like Tibbs, and I'm sure that I'm sure this was at some part of his post game presser. I'm sure he said something to this effect because he always says it. All he wants is consistency. That's all he wants. All he wants is consistently at consistency. And you cannot tell me. And again, I know I complained about the bench um, playing some. I, I'll call it lazy defense at the start of the fourth quarter. And that got the Knicks in the penalty early. But, like, you cannot tell me that the Spurs tonight were 20 more free, th- 20 free throws more physical than the Knicks. You know, I just, I, I hate blaming the refs. You guys know I hate blaming the refs. I'm, you, you know, if the Knicks had a little bit more at the beginning of the game, wouldn't have got down by as much, wouldn't have needed as much to come back. They would have won this one. We wouldn't be talking about the refs. But again, I'm also not going to sit here and kill them because they had the audacity to come out at not like peak, 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 peak intensity because they've been doing it for the better part of of 71 games, you know, before tonight um, or whatever it was, 72 games. Like, so uh, it, it happens. Um, what What should not happen is that sort of refereeing, that sort of foul disparity should not happen. And yet it happens all the time because that part of the league is broken. Thanks, Rafa. Jesse M. Year six and Mitch still is allergic to guarding threes. 
you know, I'm not going to kill Mitch tonight. I think that's a weird, like, look, I, I, I said what I said about, I thought there was a significant drop off when Hartenstein left the floor and Mitch was on totally agree. It's the guy's second game back. You know, it's the guy's second game back. You could point out that there's a drop off without kind of assaulting his overall um, abilities. Uh, I don't think anybody was having too many complaints about anything which Robin was Robinson was doing on the defensive side of the court um, in the first two months of the season when he was in the conversation for a defensive player of the year. You know, so I think we could probably I, I get, uh, you know, like everybody's frustrated because they didn't pull out that game. But that's a I wouldn't go that way. Thanks, Jesse. Robert W. Cross, NBA is straight up trash all right a lot of a lot of frustration tonight with the refs i get it you know the call that i would like to see again or the play i would like to see again the fa the, the foul that put Wemby on the line late in regulation that's the one where that was such a quick whistle to me at least it was a quick whistle and it did not like it happened so fast and like the amount of the, the I like Josh Hart, like that's the problem is like Josh Hart makes the the you got to be fucking kidding me face after like almost every foul. Um, so it's tough to take ever take him too seriously, even though he had the face after that one. But like. I don't know, it, I, I want to see that one again, because that one was just like, man, that just that that seemed like a, a play on to me. Uh, we got a couple more from Robert after this one. I think he's he's feeling the frustration right now. Uh, 12 free throw attempts and 32 free throw attempts for the Spurs. Absolute fucking bullshit. Yes. Yes. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Robert. Absolutely. Yes. And you have every right to be as frustrated as you are. Everybody has a right to be as frustrated as they are. Um, so, yeah. I think we got one more from Robert. Better to be pissed off than pissed on. Sure. I mean, and Thibodeau's pissed off. And I'm sure the team is pissed off, and I'm sure they feel like they got a job tonight. And it is clearly something with the fucking state of Texas this year. Because this team has been to Texas three times, and um, they have gotten screwed royally in one of those games. I don't know if that like tonight wasn't as there wasn't one singular play that was as glaring as the Houston game. Um, but they got jobbed and I'm trying to think about the Dallas game. I don't think there was any refereeing issue there, but just I don't know. Fuck Texas. Thanks, Robert. Mark Fabros, what's going on, Mark? With 10 games left in the season, is it okay to officially declare the Detroit trade a dud? Yeah. Yeah, it you know, it's like any trade, there's there's many different components to it. And like almost every trade, you're not going to really truly be able to give it a final grade until like the tentacles of the trade like go where they need to go and you see what if anything they do with the Bogdanovich the Bogdanovich contract this summer. Um, obviously we got to see what happens with Quentin Grimes, like what kind of player he turns into, but in the, just in the immediate, in the immediate, like, this is where we're at. They made that trade to lend support to a team that needed it because they lost two guys. And one was an offensive hub. And the other was a guy who was more of a defensive hub, but also mattered a lot to their offense as well. Is just a guy you can toss it to and feel like, like, hey, he's going to get us a good shot. He's going to make a lot of corner threes, the whole thing. And these guys have not helped you at all. Not one bit. And, you know, I wonder if they knew that then, or if they, if they knew more than maybe we realized then because I remember very well the reporting from that day and the reporting that emerged in the immediate aftermath of, of that trade. And the tea leaves that I read seems to indicate that they preferred Bruce Brown. Now, Bruce Brown has not been any great shakes this year. Um, 
but it doesn't seem like they were close on anyone else. You know, I don't know when, if and when any reporting is going to come out on it, but like, I don't think Brogdon was ever, Brogdon was never close. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Um, but they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't accomplish their goal with that trade. And it has hurt them. Uh, and it's probably cost them, I don't know, it's cost them a couple wins. Probably, you know, two wins. Is that fair to say? So, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Juanon, what's going on, Juanon? The spirit of Tim Donahue was alive and well tonight in San Antonio. Absolute horse shit refereeing. You can't convince me he was one bad apple with games refed like the one tonight. Hashtag fire tips. Um, yeah, um, it's not good. It's inconsistent. It is not commensurate with a league that I mean it's a professional fucking sports league and they can't get better refereeing and that's really unfortunate and now when you introduce gambling into the picture which I mean people think the people think the Jonte Murray the um the Jonte Porter thing is bad wait till it Wait till it comes out. And I know like there was money involved with the Donahue thing. Like, man, wait, wait until something really comes out about a ref with a financial interest in something. And it's it's a different it's a different media age now. It'll hit very differently than when the Donahue stuff came out originally. Um, and it's going to happen. You can write it down. It's going to happen. It sucks. It absolutely sucks. Thanks, Juana. Deadwords 604. Forget about the foul disparity. Watch the violation on the jump ball and tell me there isn't a gambling issue with these refs. Lo and behold, what did I just say? Yeah, like, and I thought Mike Breen phrased it best. And I, I wish I would have written down exactly what he said, but but the the imp, the he was basically like whether it's the quote unquote correct call or not, you don't make that call there. You don't decide that game there in that way. And um, it was it was just utterly ridiculous that that happened. I. It sucks because you know what sucks the most about it? This post game should be nothing but praise for, again, in my opinion, greatest offensive, certainly, performance that I've ever seen by a player wearing this uniform. And all anybody wants to talk about is the refs. And I can't blame anybody for that because, because in part, the refs, it didn't lead to a win. And that's just, and that sucks. And that absolutely sucks. Thank you, Deadwards. Hush Zoo, what's going on, Hush? This is the worst Wemby will be in his career. Wow. Yeah, you know, give credit where credit's due. Like the like the, the Spurs needed to take advantage of the shitty refereeing and and not only Wemby, and I know your comments about Wemby, so I don't mean to I don't mean to deflect it, but I you like Wemby was the best spur in the game for sure. They don't come close to winning this game without Devin Vassell. Uh, Devin Vassell was played 45 minutes. He ended up only 10 for 22 and scored 23 points. But like he was he was a problem um, tonight. I thought he played really well. I defensively, he's he's a really good player. Um, but yeah, Wemby's like, look, the, it's gonna be Wemby's league. It's gonna be Wemby's league. I'm happy. I'm happy he's in the other conference. I'll say that. And I think every Eastern Conference team should be happy he's in the other conference. You know, um, I, there's nothing the guy can't do. And he has the it factor in terms of like coming up big at the big moments. Because And you saw it tonight. You saw it tonight. I mean, the three he hit. We got another one from Hush Zhu. Um, 
which we'll get to right now. That three he hit, the last one he hit was that's superstar stuff. Um, yeah. Another comment here from Hushu, jump ball violation, said it all about the refs. Can't make the call. You can't make the call. Cannot make that call there. But it's it's so it's so annoying that we have to talk about this. How many times this year have we had to talk about this? It's not just here in New York. It's everywhere across the league. Like diehard fans not getting like the simple, like at the very least, you should be able to like your leave your frustrations limited to the things that happen on the court. It is not it is not fair to have to have an additional entire set of aggravation. It's not why we watch sports. Thanks, Hushu. Kevin Danishevsky, what's going on, Kev? How are you, man? Very reminiscent of the Wolves game last year where Randall had 57. I'm going to push back on that in a second. Ant Cat sat out and we lost another game that makes you question gambling and the refs. Well, that part, yes. Um, I think this was a little bit different than the Randall 57 because the Randall 57, he had, I don't remember exactly how many points he had it, through the third quarter, but it was a lot because he had a, a 26 point third quarter. I, I mean, I know he scored in the fourth, but I also know like his fourth quarter was like, he, he, he just like didn't have it in the fourth. Um, Brunson, like I, I, I know his shooting percentages started to like go down as we got into overtime. Uh, he like, he put them on his back through the fourth quarter like that dude some of the shots he made in the fourth which is why for me this was more impressive it, it you could say it's reminiscent um but the other part of it to me that's that would would separate this game from that game is that game if i recall correctly again down the stretch like yeah the wolves made some plays but the knicks just like they didn't have anything in the fourth quarter in that game this one like the knicks were Giving him everything. They were giving him everything they had. Mostly Jalen Brunson. But like I thought the Knicks were making. Like really making big time play. For the whole second half. The entire second half. They came out with an effort. That was as good an effort. As they have they have come out of a half with all year. But the Spurs. Made big play after big 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 players. Making big plays. Wemby. You know. Kelvin Johnson. Uh, Trey Jones. <clears throat> made a couple big plays. Obviously, Keldon Johnson, um, you know, that was more in the first half. But, like, they won that game more than the Knicks lost that game. And the refs kind of had a lot to do with it. Thanks, Kev. Dom the dentist, help. I wish I could. I wish I, I wish I was capable of that. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't have those powers. Appreciate you, man. CC Kirby, what's going on? Thank you very much for the generous contribution, CC. Appreciate you. Two things can be true. This should have never been this close because the Knicks should have showed up in the first half and not missed so many gimmies. That being said, horrendous officiating. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> you phrased it well. And again, I I want to make sure that we at least... I, we, the 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 f the the how they came out of the gate needs to be put into context. And again, I'm, this is not aimed at you, CC Kerr, because I'm not saying that you're implying anything other than what I'm about to say. But I I want to I feel like it's a good time to just like in order to survive the loss of Julius Randle and OG Ananobi and Mitchell Robinson, this team every night. For more than two months, every night for two months has needed to come out with not okay effort, not good effort, but great effort on both sides, but especially on the defensive side. And even in games where they like, oh man, this fuck the team is dog shit tonight. The Philly game, right? The KFS freaking game. 
uh, game outing this year. Like, they they defended their asses off. I just couldn't make a shot. Like, I, you really, you don't need, I, I can't think of another game where I thought they, came, like, even, like, there have been some times where they maybe came out a little sloppy. I feel like the Detroit game where they got the benefit of a, a call at the end of the game, that game, they, they came out, like, without maybe the, the total focus that you would have liked them to. But again, like the effort, you never question the effort. So for tonight, for them to, again, it's not like they were outright dogging it on D. It's just they were like a little, a little less than they're capable of being on the defensive end. And the Spurs, like, talk about taking complete advantage. They were making everything. So it makes it look a lot worse than it is. When the, when a team that again came into the night as the worst three point shooting team in the league, you know, is going to basically hit every every opportunity that they're given, it was just a bad combination. I, I, that's why I can't sit here and be like, you know, the Knicks the Knicks have no one but themselves to blame because of the effort. Like, yeah, technically they have no one but themselves to blame, but like, come on, this team gives everything, and it's why the refereeing tonight is is so is so especially annoying and, and unfortunate. Thanks, CC Kirby. Charlie Boy third. What's going on, Charlie Boy? Hey, John. Most fr frustrating loss of the season. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, for sure. I, I don't even think it's close. Um, the Knicks win easy if they give half an effort in the first half. Again, I, I just kind of addressed that. Even with the BS refs. Bogey cannot step foot on the court in the playoffs. I feel bad for JB. Uh, so do I a B with, I mean, Bogdanovich, I mean, I mean, I think the, the question about whether Bogdanovich will play if they're fully healthy, I don't even, is that even a question anymore? Really? Is that even a question anymore between Mitchell Robinson, Deuce of pride and, um, uh, and Josh Hart, like, I don't I honestly I don't even think it's a question. The bigger question for me is like again, let's just say for argument's sake, only one of those guys is available in game one of the playoffs. It doesn't even matter who it is. Pick one. Pick Randall, pick pick OG Ananobi. It, it does not matter to me who it is. Let's say only one of them is available. Do Bogey or Burks for that matter get off the bench? Figure Hart starts, McBride's coming off the bench obviously mitch is coming off the bench would you rather have precious as the as like a backup four with two starters alongside mitch or i guess hardenstein theoretically depending on how they stagger the minutes and then you basically try to you know survive that lack of spacing but you at least know you're going to get a commensurate commensurate effort on the defensive end or do you hope that it's a game where Bogey's, you know, making some shots. I I don't know, man. I don't know. It's really bad. Tonight was really bad. It was really bad. Incredibly frustrating performance from both. I'm that's the thing. It's like I this is how I operate. I'm more frustrated at Bogdanovich than I am at the refs. But that's me. Thanks, Charlie Boy third. Haitian Ferg, what's going on, Haitian? Always good to hear from you, brother. First half came back to haunt us. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's no question about it. Achua, not good on defense, and iHeart had a tough assignment. Yeah. Mitch gave a valiant effort. He's got to work uh, through the growing pains to be right come playoff time. Yep. The refs killed us late. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you summed it up. I felt really well. In terms of Precious not being good on defense, um, this was not one of his stronger games. This was, I mean, he was minus 30, <laughs> you know, he was minus 30. This was not a good game for him. I, I, the, the reason why I really don't want to kill precious is like that dude's been, that dude's been really everything they could have asked. I've said this before, but he's been everything they could have asked for since the trade, <clears throat> but not good enough, not good enough, nearly good enough tonight. I, I think that plus minus number is a, 
it's a little harsh. You know, I, I don't think he was a minus 30 in 16 minutes bad, but he was bad. He was bad. Um, appreciate you as always, Asian. Thanks for the for the contribution. Alex, riveting game. Yeah, I mean it was a game of the year. It was a it was the game of the year. I mean, I don't know that I've watched a better NBA game this season. You know, I don't think there's been five better NBA games this year. Um, couple observations. Jalen is incredible, amazing, out of words to describe. He deserves better. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, he has a great team around him, and he has guys that give everything that they have, which is all you could ask for. But, yeah, he deserved better tonight. Um, two, investigate Mitchell Irvin for game fixing. There you go. Put a name to it. And three, Bogey cannot take the court again. I mean, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. The guy, the guy has, I mean, what did he? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember if he hit a shot off the top of my head. I think he hit one. Two. He hit two shots. He was two of seven. Missed all three threes. And two turnovers. <laughs> two turnovers in 15 minutes. Man. It's not what you want. Okay. Um, thank you, Alex. Uh, no, co Co-sign all that. Frank Miranda, what's going on, Frank? Frank, you're too generous. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to seeing you at the town hall this week. What's up, Mac? It's your boy Frank from Patreon. Someone needs to check if these refs have a FanDuel or DraftKings account. My God, I never complain about the refs, but this was ridiculous. Six free throw attempts for JB. Hashtag trash refs. Yeah. I feel bad. I don't have anything else to say. I don't know what else there is to say. The f I mean, the fact that everybody is universally like, I don't complain about the refs, but this is a game to complain about the refs. But this has not been the first game or the second game or the third game this year in which we've. In which this is this has been the post game. You know. Um, I don't know what's worse, the 20 free throw discrepancy between the teams or the fact that Brunson only got six. You know, it's like. I think there have been times where it has been more egregious where calls are not being given to Jalen Brunson than we saw tonight. The, the the discrepancy of 20, the discrepancy of 20 free throws. And again, I want to just, uh, the context needs to be added. I do think a, a significant part of that was the Spurs getting in the, in the, bonus so early in the fourth quarter and I, I will put that as much at least as much on the atrocious play of the bench unit to start the fourth quarter than I would on the refs. Give it 50-50, all right? But that's shouldn't be talking about this. This is not what we should be talking about. Performance like that does not deserve to have us talking about this bullshit. This bullshit. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate you. Kevin McEwen, what's going on, Kevin? How are you? What a game. Brunson was amazing. He needed help, though. Next game up. He did need help. He did need help. Um, <clears throat> well, you, you brought it up. Next game up. You know how the Knicks can kind of make this one go away? <laughs> Beat the Thunder, right? Beat the Thunder. Um, who I mentioned it before, but I'll, I'll mention it again. Um, they, uh, did, for the second game in a row, <clears throat> uh, did not have Shea Gilders Alexander. Now, clearly the fact that they almost beat the Rockets and they absolutely dismantled, dismantled the Suns tonight shows that the Sun, the, uh, Thunder are very dangerous, whether they have SGA or not. Um, that said, I will not be feeling uh, one iota of sorrow for the Thunder if uh, Shea Gilders Alexander cannot give it a go on Sunday. Because, again, wins are important. Um, 
And yet, at the same time, as I said before, I'm like, I've fully, I have fully moved over to just get to the playoffs healthy. And we had a couple scares tonight, by the way. Mitch was hobbling. Isaiah Hardenstein, oh my God, did I, when he went down and it looked like he had really hurt his hand or his wrist or whatever it was, I, I haven't had that. I haven't had that feeling. I only had that feeling once other, one other time this year, um, two other times this year when Julius walked off in the heat game. And then obviously when Brunson left the Cavs game, because let me tell you this, this team ain't doing jack shit without Isaiah Hardenstein. Just throw that out there right now. And shout out to Zach Lowe, who gave uh, Hardenstein a lot of love in today's uh, 10 things column. Thanks, Kev. Hey, Shin, you're too much, man. You're too much. Another night where the value of Julius Randle is glaring. Yes, absolutely. 100%. A bruiser like Randle is exactly what, what uh, would have balanced the free throws along with the physicality in the game. Brunson was getting bumped all night. Yeah, they, like, they need him. They, if there's one thing that I have seen, heard, read, intuited from a lot of the fan base and 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 again i don't i, I want to be very clear I don't, I don't blame anyone for feeling this way because you you see how the knicks are playing you see how the ball is moving and like that that's the other part of it like I, and let me i want to i want to put us i'm, I'm going to get back to your point haitian but I, I i need to i meant to point this out at the beginning of the show and i didn't i know it's it, this might seem crazy because he put up however many shots he put up 47 points i thought jalen brunson was giving what the defense was taking what the defense gave him. And when they gave him a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, he was taking it. But when they converged, he was passing it. And we saw it in the final play of regulation when he made the correct basketball decision to pass the ball to Deuce McBride made, made that much easier of a basketball decision to make because he knew he wasn't going to get the foul called. Should we point it out? but made the correct basketball decision. And then throughout the beginning of overtime, I thought continued to make the correct basketball decision. And oftentimes it did it, pretty much every time it did not work out in the Knicks favor. Um, so like, I, I, I want, I want to say that because I don't, I don't want anybody to accuse me of being like, why aren't you giving Brunson shit for like monopolizing the offense? And, and then you're going to say what you're going to say about Julius Randle. Getting back to what I was going to say about Randall, I, I, I'm not going to fault any fan for looking at how they're playing these days and being like, man, Randall, you know, the ball sticks with him a lot and this and that. And and, um, you know, they don't they don't, you know, it's not moving around as much. First of all, and I, I said something to this effect in after the last game, and I'm going to go a little harder on it right now. Julius Randall, quote unquote, hogs the ball. Sometimes. Because he needs to. And we haven't we don't have a lot of evidence with him with this version of this team. And the evidence that we do have, he was part of a starting lineup that got on top of a fucking steamroller and demolished the entire league. So you can't to your point, Haitian, you can't look at what at what Randall did after they made the trade to make their team make a lot more sense. You can't look at him after that trade and be like, Oh, well he, you know, he was really the, the ball hogging. It wasn't working. No, it was working beautifully. Everything was working and they were getting great shots with Julius Randall as part of the offense. And they will get those great shots again with Julius Randall as part of the offense. They get great threes with him as part of the offense. They're not, they're hardly getting any great looks from three right now. And that's because they have only one guy to put pressure on the defense. You had a second guy to put pressure on the defense, and then it's amazing what's going to open up. Um, they need him, they need his physicality, they need his gravity, they need it all. And again, a game like this where what we saw was magic. It was unbelievable. It was stuff the stuff we should tell our grandkids about this game. 
But the reason he needed to do what he did and expend all that energy to the point where he had nothing left to give at the end, the reason for that is because it was just him. And that is, there is no contending team, no contending team in which there's only one guy that has the gravity to bend another defense towards them. Every other contending team, whether you're talking about Denver with Murray, um, Oklahoma City with J-Dub, uh, Minnesota with Towns when they're whole, uh, you know, the Clippers with all of their stars. Uh, who am I forget? You know, the Celtics, I mean, Jesus Christ, their entire freaking starting lineup. Uh, Milwaukee, Dame, you know, if you want to throw Cleveland in there with, with Garland, like all of these teams have a second guy who, like, you need that. You need the second guy. Some of these teams have third guys, but they, Knicks don't have one right now, you know, so they need him back. They need their guy back. Thanks, Haitian. Hajzu with uh, another one. Felt like this is one of the games we really missed OG and Randall, you think? Yeah. We really needed length to bother the Spurs. What did, what did what we did what we could? I love Brunson. Um gave everything they had after halftime. Gave everything they had after halftime. The the the, the between the frustration over the refs, between the frustration over Bogdanovich and the bench between frustration at this point of like not having the guys you mentioned, not that I'm blaming them. You don't blame anybody for, for being injured, but you, you know, it, it is a reality, you, you know, add to it the frustration of like how many of those, again, bunnies did they miss? They, but the Spurs length bothered the hell out of them and they didn't have the length to counteract it. It's unfortunate. Thanks, Hush. Alex with another one. For now, I'm out on star chasing. We already have our guy. Nobody better than JB is available via trade. We need an IQ replacement. Fix this bench. Yeah, I mean, they the, look, they the bench, they need another. They let me see, let's put it this way. First of all, the, the idea is not to like obviously goes without saying the idea is not to replace Jalen Brunson or like we need someone better than Jalen Brunson. The idea is to to give Jalen Brunson the supporting cast that he needs. And I think it's okay to say at this point, at least before the playoffs, that the jury is out on whether Julius Randle can be that level of player if your goal is to win a title not as opposed to if your goal is to win a round or two and win 50 games and like whatever no if your goal is to win a title it is okay to say the jury is out on randall and you know if you want to take it a step further the jury is out on whether randall could be a number three if you bring in a number two or a co 1a or 1b or whatever you the case may be that's one issue the point you're making about the bench, I completely agree with you because, like, again, going back to teams that, going back to teams that actually win it all and can really contend, they always need to have, they need to have multiple guys who, when, the star initiator is not on the floor. They need a second guy who can get the, get the ball rolling downhill. And again, that's not a shot at Randall because like, you know, Giannis is like, not even, that's not his forte. Like you don't like he Randall's not a guard. You, and you need a guard. You need it. I guess with long, long story short, what I'm trying to say is you need a second guard who can really put that extreme pressure. Now, the thing I, I I must point out is at no point in time, at no point in time last year or the beginning of this year, when Jalen Brunson was off the court, 
were the offensive numbers with Emmanuel quickly in the game very good. They were not good. So like the notion that like when Emmanuel quickly was here, the bench was fine in terms of the offensive production was is not true. It was better than it has been. Yes, it's better than it has been. But it was that was not great. They. You know, and that, but that's not all on quickly either, like that, you know, that, that he look at some of the units that he was running with. Um, so, yeah, but they need they need to they need it. Look, they need another. We know they need another piece. We know they need another piece. We knew they needed another piece in January when they were going crazy and, and killing everybody in the league. And obviously, Bogdanovich, you know, is not the answer. So we'll see. I don't know. We'll see what they do this summer. We'll see what they do this summer. Thank you, Alex. Hush zoo. Hush zoo's all over it um, tonight. Boyan, all we ask is you put the ball in the basket. Well, that, that, but that's what he needs to like. It sounds overly simplistic, but sometimes basketball is simple. And when you have a guy who has the sort of weaknesses that Bogdanovich has and is at the stage of his career where he just cannot defend, cannot defend at a commensurate level at all, can't defend anyone. Like, he's at the point where, in order to justify his defense, in order to justify his defense, he needs to be, like, the absolute peak offensive version of what he has been in his career, which I want to say, probably, I think his best offensive numbers were in his first year in Detroit, um, when he had, like, I don't know what exactly what his effective field goal percentage was. It was insane. This season was very good. It was not, I don't think it was as good as when he first got to Detroit. I mean, when the dude was like out of this world, his offense has fallen off a cliff. And like, I think part of it and Benji has been all over this is that he's being asked to create more as opposed to just taking advantage of what others can create for him and like make just like a lot of catch and shoots or like maybe not a simple catch and shoot, but like more or less like the heavy lifting has been done for him. He's not capable of doing any heavy lifting right now. And when the heavy lifting is done for him, he's not making enough shots. That's all there is to it. Thanks, Hush. Kevin Danishevsky, Wemby, JB, Unreal, and hoping finals match up soon. I wouldn't mind a rematch against the Spurs in the finals, although this is what makes the league so freaking terrifying. Is like there's usually a guy like this in the league. You know, oftentimes there is a guy like this where, you know, whether it's. Or maybe not often, but like a lot of the time there's a guy or a team like this, whether it's Curry and KD on the Warriors, whether it was LeBron with the Heat, whether it was Shaq with the Lakers where it was Jordan with the Bulls and Jokic right now, where you can do everything right. You could build your team as perfectly as your as as anyone could build their team. And you could play beautifully and and make all the right plays and the whole thing. And you could just get to a point where it's like I guess it doesn't matter. Cause that dude's over there. And I think Jokic is there now. And the only question is, how soon does Wemby get to that point? And how long does he stay there? It's the only question. You know, and and I, and, and I obviously, what can the Spurs continue to put a team around him that fosters that greatness? And they have a little bit of experience with that sort of thing, don't they? You know, with building championship teams around special players. So... You know, so it's a, it's a frightening thought for the rest of the league. Thanks, Kev. Another one from Kev. Uh, Bogey needs to go into the shadow realm. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, yeah, I think I think tonight. That's that's my big one tonight. Uh, I'm 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 I think I'm done. I'm done with Bogey. <laughs> Sorry, Bogey. I really I wanted it to work so bad. I was I was so I was such a fan of this trade. Such a fan of the trade. It's been a disaster. It's, it's the only word for it. 
It's been a disaster. Thanks, Kev. Sam Garcia's dad. What's going on, Sam Garcia's dad? A game like this shows why Julius Randle is the number two on this team. We need Jew back. Hashtag Brunson, no words. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm Listen, this is the, you're, you're preaching to the choir here. Absolutely. How soon can he get back? Look, they they need him. You know, we know when they need him. And we know what version of him they need. So, you know, there's nine games until the playoffs. Not Time's running out. Thank you, Ray. Roger Fortune. What's going on, Roger? How are you? I'm hurt. Not even for me, but for Jalen Brunson. Yeah, that's it's what I opened the show with. He deserved that win. Hate to blame the refs, especially with that first half, but this dude needs to be respected for what he is. A superstar. Yeah, and he doesn't get superstar calls. He doesn't get the superstar whistle. He has not gotten the superstar whistle really all the all year. Um there have been times where he's where he's gotten to to, to the line a lot. Don't get me wrong. There's been times where he shot a lot of free throws. But that's because teams just like gave up and they're just like, we, we're just going to hack this guy. Um, he doesn't get the star whistle at all. Um, it's. It's incredibly frustrating. Thank you, Roger. All right. We got a couple coming in from uh, my main man, Dom Cappuccini. It's time for us to wake up. The second seed dream was nice. But for me, it's dead now. It, I don't know if it was ever really alive for me, but anyway. We really got to focus on the fourth or fifth seed from here on out. The schedule gets tougher. Well, I'm not quite there yet, Dom, but uh, let me get to your next Super Chat before I comment more on that. Uh, congrats, JB. I'm beyond happy we have you. Said it couldn't have been a win. I can't wait to see what he has as a follow-up for us the next game. I mean, what else can he do? <laughs> what? What else? What else can he do? What else? What more can you ask of him? The dude scored sixty-one points. Sixty-one. This basketball franchise has been around for seventy-seven years. Seventy-seven years. Two times. Twice. Has a player gotten to 61 points tonight? And Carmelo. And Carmelo did it against a god awful um, Charlotte team in a game that, not that it, in a game that didn't matter, but like that year was, that was a lost season. And I remember that night. I remember that night very well, um, watching it on a tiny, tiny, tiny TV and my then girlfriend, now wife's. Um, old bedroom at her house. Um, but no, it, he's he's unreal. Um, you know, there's nothing more to, to that that could possibly be be asked of him. And the fact that he did it again, like let let's take a step back. We're all sitting here and universally agreeing with his head coach, with like, how does this guy not get to the line more? If he had even gotten to the line one more time, one more time, one. That's the franchise record. That's the franchise record for most points in a game. You know, um, as for we need to accept the four or the five seed. I, I don't know if I'm quite there yet. I know we are a half game back of Cleveland. Um, let's talk about that for a second. The Cavs. The, first of all, we're tied in the loss column, which I think is notable. Um, tied in the loss column, and we have the tiebreaker. So the Cavs have one fewer game left to work with than the Knicks do. Um, the Cavs have, um, Jesus Christ, can I do some math? Uh, they have eight games left. Um, the Knicks have nine. And we know, we know what the Knicks schedule is. I'm just going to real quick read the Cavs schedule. Um, for anybody who may not not know these sorts of things off the top of, off the top of their head, uh, five game road trip out west. 
Denver, Utah, Phoenix, Lakers, Clippers. And again, we're talking about a team that, yes, they got Donovan Mitchell back tonight, but uh, took a lot of effort to beat a Sixers team that is not good. And then when they get back from that West Coast road trip, they do end with three home games. Two of them are probably going to be gimmies, the Grizzlies and the Hornets. Although, hey, listen, funny things happen on the last day of the season. In between there is a game against the Pacers. And I called out that game against the Pacers today in my newsletter. And I said that is the most important remaining game for the Knicks that the Knicks are not involved in. And the reason I said that is because we could we could have a scenario where a a win by the Cavs in that game maybe to your point Dom secures the Cavs the 3 seed and pushes the Knicks down to the to the 4 to the 4 and maybe pushes the Pacers down to wherever they're going to be, maybe out of the five, maybe out of the six, wherever it's going to push versus if the Pacers win that game, maybe it pushes the Knicks up to the three and pushes the Pacers up to the six. And then there's your first round matchup. Um, it is it is a monumental game. But look, the Cavs, the Cavs season is going to come down to this West Coast road trip. Are they going to go for they? I mean, you. You know, are they going to go four and one? Are they going to go one and four? More likely, it's going to be three and two or two and three. And, you know, we know we know what the Knicks are up against. Um, Obviously, the San Antonio game looms incredibly large. And then I'll just read the rest of the schedule after that. Um, We go to Miami. Back home for Sacramento. I'm sure that won't be an easy game, although I know they lost Kevin Herter. And then, um, man. This is a tough four game road trip at Chicago, at Milwaukee, at Chicago, at Boston, and then back home for Brooklyn and Chicago. I, I, I feel pretty, pretty confident in saying if the Knicks want to be the three seed, I, I mean, do they need to go four and three in these next seven? Do they need to go four and three in these next seven? Because if you figure they're going to get the last two, and I think they're going to get the last two, I think they will find a way to get those last two games. If they go four and three in the next seven and then get those last two, that gets them six more wins. Um, you, uh, right? Yeah. So, so that would that would be that would be six and three. Are the Cavs going to get six? Are the Cavs going to go six and two? Is basically the that's the question. And I would say no, the Cavs are not going to go six and two. Uh, so, and the Knicks have the tiebreaker. Now, can the Cavs go five and three? I think that's more realistic. And if the Cavs go five and three, well, then all of a sudden, if the Knicks go three and four in their next seven, even if they win those last two, five wins from the Knicks versus five wins from the Cavs, that's not going to get you there, which is, again, not to bring it back to tonight, which is why tonight does hurt, you know, it, which is why tonight hurts because again, depending on what the Cavs do on this road trip, this, this is the game we, we could wind up looking back and, and saying that's the game that cost them the three seed, but we'll see, you know, again, go out and beat Oklahoma city. If you go out and beat Oklahoma city, all's forgiven. Cause then all of a sudden it's like, all right, well now you only have to go three and three in the next six makes life easier. So we'll see. Thanks, Tom. Juan Cruz, damn it, GMAC, the Wiggles curse. JB for MVP. I have no idea what that's referring to. I'm sorry. Um, shout out to shout out to you though, Juan. And and GMAC is unfortunately not here, so we can't hop on. Uh, but uh, I, I referring to Andrew took his brother to see the Wiggles in San Antonio. Oh. Okay, I if that was mentioned on the pregame pod, I, I I did not get a chance to listen to the pregame pod today, so that's my bet. Um, they are a kids entertainment group. Oh, I think I knew that actually. The Wiggles, I I think I knew that. I think I knew that. 
I've never watched the Wiggles though. I have no idea what they 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 do. I don't I don't know what anything about them. Sorry. Thank you, Juan. Zeke Smith, what's going on, Zeke? JB, top five MVP, top ten player in the NBA confirmed. He'd be on my ballot. <laughs> He'd be on my ballot. That's for shit sure. Yeah, I mean. Prediction today. Prediction today is he finishes sixth. That is my prediction. Um, today, yeah, I think he finishes. Um, I think he finishes. Uh, I think he finishes in sixth place. Be nice if he finished in fifth. I think he finishes in sixth. I think Tatum gets ahead of him. Thanks, Zeke. Ryan Eggers, what's going on, Ryan? How are you, man? In the words of Kelly Oubre Jr., you a bitch, your grandma a bitch, your auntie a bitch, your mama a bitch. Now that that's out of the way, the Brunson burner was lit. Desperately missed Julius and OG. Let's fucking go Knicks. I like that comment. I like that comment a lot. Yeah, for anybody who missed the Oubre rant after the Clipper game the other night, it's, uh, it's or uh, worth revisiting. Uh, legendary stuff from Kelly Oubre Jr., for sure. And I completely agree. Um, but yeah, the Brunson burner was lit. We need our guys back. What a book. What a, what in like, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to like wish into existence four and three in this stretch. And like, none of these games are insurmountable. Like the heat, the Kings, the bulls, you know, the bucks, and like, yeah, the, the Celtics are out. Yes, the Celtics loom. Uh, we'll see what version of the Celtics we get, you know, and it's the third to last game of the season. So. Uh, or the whatever it is. The, yeah, I think. It, no, it is the third to last game of the season. It's the third to last game. So we'll see. I don't, I don't know what version of the Celtics we're going to get. But like, that's the only one. Like, if they played all of their guys, then that would be really, really super intimidating. Um, And I'm trying to be like, man, can we, can we get the four and three? If they had their guys back, it would be like, yeah, we get four four out of these seven games. Absolutely. But now we have to sit here and you have to, it's it's white knuckle time. Thanks, Ryan. OG team, what's going on, OG team? I need a post-game interview from Boye, and I need to hear an explanation from him on why he's struggling so much since he got here. I have not seen one clip of him since he's got here and that's very interesting because i don't so the way this works and like fred has talked about this on the pod is like the Knicks beat guys will like they'll they'll request certain guys during like certain like practice sessions and whatnot but then in the locker room, it's like they go, you know, talk to whoever's there in the locker room. I'm I'm really I'm surprised like we haven't had one soundbite, one clip emerge in which they've like <clears throat> asked Bogdanovich, like, hey man, like, what's up? <laughs> you know, but I don't know what's up. Thanks, OG team. Alex. I'll take a fat tire. Hey, man. Bad job by me. Hour and 25 minutes into this freaking post game. And um, only now am I congratulating Dante DiVincenzo on having the greatest, yes, the greatest three point shooting season in Knicks history. Uh, his accomplishment came uh, early on. It obviously got overshadowed by the events of the rest of this game. Um, but uh, like Divincenzo, like his he was great. He was good tonight. I have no complaints about Divincenzo. Um, and he set the record. And Alex, I owe you a beer. Uh, fat tire is fine. We'll find uh, a, a when you come up here in April. We'll, we'll find a bar that we will we will go to, and I will be very very happy 
to um to purchase that uh for you in in divincenzo's honor of course hell of a season from dante really thanks alex dom cappuccini with another one i agree i'd be very shocked if we see og on sunday or even next week i have a feeling they are keeping him in bubble wrap as long as possible um, with both the playoffs and July free agency in mind. And then Dom has another one. Um, and then I'll comment on this. Thank you so much, Dom. Dom, your, your generosity is like out of this world tonight. Seriously, thank you, dude. Um, thank you very much. I hope we are both wrong on OG. Uh, Marshall from Chat Sports noticed a swollen elbow when he was dropping, dapping up fans in Toronto. I saw the picture. Um, you were right. Asking for four and was a bit much, and I set myself up for mild depression onto the next. Well, don't, don't, don't get too upset about it. Um, in terms of OG, I to me, Julius is the one they're keeping in bubble wrap, and that's I've, I've been drawing that distinction now for a little while, and I think. I just I think it's really clear. I think it's really clear that they are going to push this as long as possible, as long as they think they can do so. And they're basically like I think they basically decided we are going to play Julius Randle in as many games as we think he needs to get his conditioning where it needs to be and feel just like comfortable with the team on the court again. And like, for, so the first game where he's like getting re acclimated to his teammates in live, live basketball in a live basketball setting is not game one of the playoffs. Like I do not think the first time we will see Julius Randall is game one of the playoffs. I don't think that will be the case, but like at this point, like if I had to bet on it, I would, maybe bet that the first time we see him is in like the third to last game of the season, something like that. Um, and then maybe he sits or, or maybe even like, I don't know, maybe they looking at that Boston game. And they're like, maybe we, like, cause that the Boston, the, the, the Boston game is the first end of a back to back. And then they go to, they play the nets at home on the Friday after the Boston game on Thursday. And then they finish the season on Sunday against Chicago. Maybe they feel like they're they're only going to play him in one game of the back to back, and um, they only want him for like the next game. Now, tip like I don't know that they're he's this is the sort of injury where like you need to keep a guy out on the like for one end of a back to back. We'll see. I don't think we're going to see him before that Boston game. I'll say that. And then as for OG, man. I, I, I don't know. I'm at a loss. I mean, I know Tibbs keeps saying he's getting better. All right. I guess we'll take him at his word. You know, I guess we'll take him at his word. I, I don't. I don't know. But yeah, uh, was it a lot to ask of them to 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 go four and zero against you know these these teams? Yeah, I think it was. And I, I wish I hadn't have done it. And I hope I still lose, by the way, to be very clear. When I pick two and two this week, I hope I still lose. I'd, I'd be sick to my stomach if I won. Anyway, thank you, Dom. Keanu Ruiz. What's going on, Keanu? First Super Chat. Well, welcome aboard. I'm sorry I couldn't have come on a more fun. Um, I mean, it was a fun night, a fun game, but, you know, as far as the mood right now. Um. 2021 was the we here season. 2024 is becoming the he here season. Oh, I like that. That's good. That's good. We have a superstar. Just got to get our guys back. Will that happen? I you took the again. It's funny how so we don't plan it out where I'm going to go on to like talk about a thing and then the next super chat will be exactly picking up on that thing. I mean, yeah, if I was a betting man right now and you gave me like even money odds on Julius and OG are back for game one of the playoffs or Julius and OG are not back for game one of the playoffs. I would bet that they would be back. I would bet that we would, they'd be back, but like there's, 
there is no information to go off of here. None. Based on what, based on the information we have, it's not like we could draw, like there are no reasonable conclusions to be drawn. Because, again, not to relitigate, not relitigate, not to go pat back over all of this, but like the whole point of getting the surgery for, for OG on an OB was to make the problem go away as opposed to continuing to try to solve the problem with rest and rehabilitation. That was the point of the surgery. Make the thing better completely. And you would not think that they would have cleared him to play unless it was better. So very clearly, he has re-aggravated something. But like, and that's, I guess, the thing that I haven't heard anybody talk about. And it's maybe because there's nobody that can talk about it, no doctor that could talk about it with the information that we have, which is like, how can you, how does one re-aggravate or, re, or whatever this specific sort of injury? Because it's not like you've retorn something. It's like the... If, if we take the Knicks at their word, which is like maybe that's our maybe that's our fault to begin with. But if we take the Knicks at their word, this was just removing bone spurs. Well, they got the bone spurs out. So what like what is what's left? It, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just very clear that there's swelling in the area. It's not right. They need to wait for the swelling to go down. And. And, and, and we hope it goes down. I don't I, I don't. I don't know, but ba look, I I hope he's back. They need him. And yes, I agree with you about the he here season. Thanks, Keanu. Sam L., what's going on, Sam? To make tonight's brutal loss worse, both centers are dinged up now. iHeart's wrist took a big shot, and Mitch was hobbled, landed awkwardly on the weak ankle. I mean, that, yeah. The, I mean, heart, of the two, I mean, it would be heartbreaking if Mitch had to miss any time if he just came back. That would be really heartbreaking. But, like, this team, I do not want to think about where they would be without Isaiah Hardenstein. And specifically the version of Isaiah Hardenstein that they've gotten. Because they just, he is, I again, I know, it, I don't know what his plus minus was. I don't care. He, th th you felt for as much as you felt it when Brunson was not in the game, you felt it when Isaiah Hardenstein was not in the game tonight. They need him so badly. They really do. Thank you, Sam. LDS. What's going on, LDS? Watch that injury report Sunday for Mitch and iHeart. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Or, well, it'll it'll come out tomorrow. So, yeah. We'll, we'll know. We'll know tomorrow at, I guess, about 5.30, I think, is when the report comes out. I'm sure they're both going to be on it. Thanks, LDS. Maybe might be Jericho Sims up to bat. I-95 bully. The superstar always gets the whistle. What the fuck is, going to, is it going to take for Brunson, Brunson to get one? The league should be embarrassed on his legendary night. Shake my head. I, I feel helpless. I don't I don't I wish I had something to give other than you're right. It sucks. The refing sucks. It's a problem in the league and they need to figure it out. And I don't think they're going to figure it out. I don't I've this I've said before. Until it becomes a dollars and cents problem for the league, until they are losing money, they're not going to do anything. And I don't think they're losing I don't think they feel if they are losing money, I don't think they feel that they're losing enough if they're even losing it. I don't think they do. Thank you, I-95 bully. Alex with another one. Alex, appreciate the generosity time, man. Seriously. Uh, thank you. You think the organization is already preparing for iHeart to start next year and beyond? I love Mitch. Worried this is the new normal for him and his body cannot handle Tim's demands and he's best suited for the load management plan. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with Tim's demands. I think it's just like, a, you know, a starting center in the league. Um, it's not, forget it. Actually, what am I even talking about? 
he's gotten injured on like weird freak things. And this is his second game back. So I don't think there's anything. I like you. I mean, I don't know when to like slap the injury prone label on a guy. I always feel very uncomfortable doing that. To me, injury prone is more like a guy routinely gets like dinged and dinged up and dented up and whatever and like sits out here and there and whatnot. I think Mitch has just had, and maybe it's by virtue of the way he plays and he's so big and he j- just jumps around a lot and like the in- the odds of him like landing awkwardly are are higher because he's long and lanky and and um and and it jumps very high and is involved in lots of scrums under the basket and the whole thing. I just think he's gotten bad luck and that's why he's been out and now it's a second game back and like I'm not I'm not judging. Mitchell Robinson at all. I again, it's one thing to point out that they were better with Hart. They're a lot better with Hartenstein on the floor right now, including tonight. It is another. I'm not going to make the leap where it's like this is like super concerning about Mitch. He is the second game back, and like, do I think Hartenstein is the better option as the long term starting center for this team? I do, and we've talked about a lot of the reasons why. But that, I, I mean. As far as this summer, like we'll worry about the summer. The summer, I think there's a lot of other stuff at play, and I think there will, you know, my guess is that there will be some other stuff that will develop that will impact the Knicks' decision on how they proceed with the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, center position. Thanks, Alex. Kevin Danishevsky. Uh, with another one. Kev, you're a madman. So, uh, Quentin Grimes was ruled out for the season tonight and is 0 for 100 on threes in Detroit. Not saying uh, Grimes is a total bust yet, but can you think of another lose-lose deal? Um, he's not a bust. He's a young player. It's his third year in the league. Um, I do think, however, that this probably puts the kibosh on any um, extension talks that he would have had with uh, Detroit. This summer, I, I would assume that he will... Uh, enter his uh, unrestricted free agency uh, year um, without a contract extension. Um, as far as another lose lose trade, I mean, I, it's twelve thirty in the morning, so I I'm, I'm not in a, in the right place to rack my brain throughout for like all of like Knicks or all of NBA trades of like recent vintage. Obviously there are, there are lose, lose trades that happen, but I just think it's a trade that didn't move the needle for anybody at this point though. You'd rather be on Detroit side of the deal because the Detroit didn't like, what did they lose? They, no one was giving them a first round pick for bogey this year. The loss for Detroit, you could argue, happened last year when they could have gotten a first for Bogey last year, and they didn't do that. So instead, they got Grimes. Is whatever Grimes is going to turn into going to be better than whatever whoever they would have taken with a first-round pick last year? I, I, I don't know. But, you know, another lose-lose trade. Not really. I mean, the Cam trade? Right, the cam- I mean, what did the Hawks get out of the cam trade? They got a, they got a pick that ended up going to San Antonio for the Murray in the Murray trade. So I guess that theoretically helped them get Murray. So it's not, I don't know, I don't know. I can't think of one. Thanks, Kev. Tom, Tom, Tom Cappuccini, you 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 too much, man. Seriously, you you're uh, the MVP of these things sometimes. We'll shoot much more consistently the rest of the season um, tonight and we'll play up to tough teams. Tonight's silver lining is that it's hard for me not to envision us finishing with less than 48 wins. Good enough for me. I had really been gassing myself up for 50 wins. That's the thing that I think like something. about. I mean, I know it's just a number. It's just it's just an arbitrary number. Something special about 50 wins in the NBA. And I wonder, can they, can they still get there after tonight? Um, you, 
you know, you look at where they are. Um, I'm just, sorry, I have to remind myself of like what uh, I'm. This, this, I gotta tell you, I've been like so off all night because of this. How this fucking game went. What a, what a, um, what a disappointing, what a, what an absolute disappointing outcome. Just to reaffirm what we've all been talking about, yeah, they're forty-four and twenty-nine, so they they have to go six and three. They have to go six and three. I don't. I gotta tell you, I'd be I actually honestly I'd be shocked if they finished with forty-eight wins. I think the worst this team does, the worst this team does, is forty-nine wins. Um, I'm not going to say like they have to beat the Thunder to get to 50. Like they don't have to beat the Thunder to get to 50 because they could lose to the Thunder and could they go six and three or six and two from there? Yeah, they could go six and two. They could they could only lose two more games the rest of the way. I don't know what two games those are going to be, but they, yeah, they could do it. So I'd like to get to 50. Thank you, Dom. Brando, what's going on, Brando? Just want to thank you and the KFS fam. Uh, hashtag Nixon5. Well, that's very kind of you, Brando. Appreciate that. Uh, nothing I'd rather be doing than sitting here commiserating about uh, this just utterly frustrating loss. Um, and yeah, <laughs> Nixon5. I think the playoffs, well, we'll we'll see who we got. We see who what horses are in the, we'll see what horses are in the stable for the playoffs. Um, here's what I do know though, and I'm going to end it on a positive note. I know that any game, the Knicks play any game, the Knicks play, it doesn't matter who they play it against any game, the Knicks play that Jalen Brunson is in uniform. They have a chance of winning and there are not all that many players that you could say that about in the league today and really mean it. Um, he is one of the superstars of this league. He is just like, and here, and you know what? I'm a, and I'll, 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 I'll end with this. I don't think he's done yet. I don't think he's done getting better. I don't think he's done improving. I think. This is the year that will put him on the map, obviously, as far as being a, an MVP candidate and and a guy who could be certainly the leading scorer on a team that is contending for a title. And this may be the highest scoring season of his career. I don't think he's done. I don't think he's done getting better. yet. I think he's going to get better. And maybe the numbers won't be there in the future as much as they are there this year. And maybe he will have to start getting managed a little bit differently as he ages. But in terms of his game and his impact on winning, I think I think the best is yet to come. So as long as that dude is here in New York, for as frustrated as we all are tonight, we should all be counting our lucky stars that we have that dude. Because that dude... Is something special. So we'll end it on a high note. Um, thank you, everybody uh, who's still watching. Thank you, everybody who watched. Thanks to everybody who's listening in podcast form, who was maybe doing something other than watching basketball on a Friday night. Um, if you like the video, obviously subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. If you want to drop a rating or a review, those are great as well. Um, I will be back on uh, the post game on Easter Sunday following what will hopefully be a, a nice bounce back game against the Oklahoma city thunder. Um, and here we are, man. It, it season ends two regular season ends two weeks from Sunday. It's wild, but uh, we'll finish up strong. I'm sure about that. Okay. Thanks everybody. Uh, thank you again to Kevin on the ones and twos, and we will talk to you later. Peace out.